Tucked away in a suburb of Leicestershire sits Ashby de la Zouche Castle. Previously, we released a video from Kirby Muxo Castle, and much of the history between these two fortifications is linked. It's a remarkable ruin standing in a colossal manor above the town of Ashby. Today we look at another one of England's forgotten castles. From at least the year 1086, there has been a settlement on the site of Ashby Castle. Previously, it was a manor known as the Asibi Manor. In 1100, the Earl of Leicester brought the land. In the 12th century, a manor house was constructed, and around this, a settlement grew. By the mid 1300s, the town of Ashby was the sixth largest in the country and was surrounded by a 60 acre deer park. In 1399, the Lizouche line died out, leaving the castle's inheritance uncertain. The War of the Roses broke out, and the manor passed to the ownership of James Butler in 1420. Butler was captured at the Battle of Towson by Edward IV and was then executed. The Crown then seized the manor and all of Butler's estates. Following this, Ashby was converted into a castle by William Lord Hastings. He was a favourite of Edward IV and fought with him at Towton. Later, Hastings would be knighted and became the Chamberlain of the Royal Household. Because of this, Hastings acquired lots of land around the Midlands which had been confiscated from the King's enemies. Around 1471, William began to use Ashby as his primary residence. In 1474, Edward gave William permission to fortify four of his manors and to build deer parks around them. William then fortified the castle and created a huge 3,000 acre deer park around it. It appears that he intended to construct a huge castle which had four towers within it. The Great Tower was built in the 1470s and was an architectural centrepiece. It expressed the wealth and the power of Lord Hastings and would have been decorated with huge ornate paintings and tapestries. By looking inside the Great Tower, you can see the different buildings and also a number of ornate fireplaces. By standing at the top of the tower, you can see for miles around. This shows what a great view one would have in order to detect threats should an enemy be on the horizon. Inside the Great Tower would have been a great chamber, kitchen, armoury, treasure and cellars. Near the entrance of the castle there was a kitchen built. This kitchen was built to house the size of Hastings household. It features two storeys and also on the outside would have been a buttery and a pantry. For an entrance in the pantry, carts would have been brought in, pulled by horses and would have offloaded food ready for the kitchen. Outside of the kitchen is the great chamber. At the end of the hall would have been a pair of withdrawing chambers with a great chamber above. This would have been the principal entertaining room for important guests. The great chamber still has a 15th century fireplace. Records suggest that the Great Chamber was adorned with huge tapestries depicting the story of Romans, with several carpets, chests and chairs. Also built by Lord Hastings was a huge ornate chapel inside the castle's walls. Hastings would have been served by priests and singers from his household when he was in residence. They would have sat at each side in the stalls. At the back of the chapel would have been the high altar, with a sculpted altarpiece on a plinth. Since 1907, the eastern part of the chapel has been screened off for use as a private burial place for the Hastings family. Inside the chapel would have been a private apartment for the Lord, with him being able to worship in peace. After the Reformation, the Hastings family became Protestant and hired many radical preachers. The religious imagery that was present before would have been smashed up and destroyed. Past the garden there is also two of the turrets which would have been used for defence. Both of these are now in a ruinous state. One is very well hidden in the corner of the grounds. With the death of Edward IV, Hastings refused to support Richard I's deposition of Edward V. As a consequence, he was executed in the Tower of London, which we cover in more detail on our video from Kirby Muxlow Castle. The castle following William, Lord Hastings' widow's death, was passed to William's son, Edward Hastings. Although he spent very little time there, he did host a quick visit from Henry VIII in 1503. Following Edward's death, his son George inherited the castle and was a favourite of Henry VIII, and he rebuilt parts of the castle in brick and redesigned the gardens. The gardens at Ashby would have been in a sunken Tudor garden, which was the fashion back then. The Tudor gardens took inspiration from Italian gardens and they would have been extremely ornate. They would have been extremely large and expensive to create and maintain. In 1560, Henry Hastings inherited the castle and it was used as a place to imprison Mary Queen of Scots in 1569, while she was accused of plotting against Elizabeth I. Throughout the next 80 years, the castle would continue to be an ornate residence entertaining the royals. In 1642, 
the English Civil War broke out. Henry Hastings' son, Ferdinando, inherited the earldom and remained neutral. However, his youngest brother Henry became a key royalist commander in the Midlands. The castle was well placed linking the royalist territories in the north and the west of England, and also giving access to the River Trent. Around the town of Ashby de la Zouche, buildings were torn down to provide materials to re-fortify the castle and the town. King Charles passed through the castle in May 1645 whilst on his way to besiege Leicester, but by now the royalists were losing. Following an outbreak of plague, the parliamentarians began to raid the town and a surrender of the castle on good terms was agreed. Following a royalist rebellion in Kent, the parliamentarians were concerned that Henry Hastings would return to reoccupy the castle. The castle at this time had been used as a prison to house royalist prisoners. Because of this worry and the security of the castle, it was decided to slight the castle to put it beyond military use, and this is how the castle lies today. In 1819, Sir Walter Scott wrote the novel Ivanhoe, and it featured a scene in which a tournament was held at Ashby Castle. This made the castle a popular destination for Victorian tourists. These tourists left their mark on the castle by graffitiing on the walls. The castle was repaired slightly over the past century, and today is managed by English heritage. Ashby de la Zouche has a rich history. It has seen execution, royal visits, sieges, and destruction throughout its turbulent past. It stands today as a forgotten relic of the past, which would have been ornately grand in its heyday. Thank you for watching The Untold Past. To support the channel, please subscribe. Thank you.